What's going on guys, Culprit here, and today we're going to get away from a little bit of the news uh, type videos. We're going to get into my topical commentary videos. Today I want to talk about a kind of a, a favorite subject of mine, at least you know in school and stuff, and that's psychology uh, and, and kind of intel on the battlefield and, and how I use some of this to kind of help my game, to augment my game and kind of make the right decisions. And that's basically, the crux of that is assessing your enemy. Now everybody, you know, that's kind of a broad stroke there, but I'm going to get into kind of how I do this, and, and I'm, if I can, uh, what I want to do is I want to make again a, a, an analogy to poker as you guys know i played a lot of poker when i was you know early 20s uh you know I, I studied it really hard played it a lot and a lot of the same kind of ideas and philosophies uh, i got from that in, in my years playing that i i do apply to first person shooters mostly you know always be aggressing aggression is usually correct <laughs> you know it doesn't mean you play stupid but you know you, you want to be on the aggression you want to have the initiative and that comes from there. I mean, that was always my philosophy. Uh, there's a big difference between aggressive and reckless. You know, you got to be able to identify that. You got to be smart about it. Um, there's a classic analogy in poker. And it's basically if you sit down at the table and you can't spot the sucker in the first 15 to 20 minutes, then the sucker's you. And that's that's very true in, in, in poker anyway. It doesn't translate directly over to Battlefield 4 and, and first-person shooters at large. But what it, what it says to me is... You need to be sitting down at this at the table, and in this case, it'll be in the server. And make sure you're looking around. Look who's there with you. Look who's playing. Both teammates, and and honestly, your teammates are less important. You want to be looking at your enemies, and you always want to be aware of them and kind of analyzing, you know, what they're doing, how strong you feel they are. Are they better than you? Are they worse than you? Are you kind of heads up? These are important gauges to make. Now, these can be hard and little quick little hundred ticket TDM matches, but usually, if you're gonna stay in a long either a long game mode like rush or obliteration or a conquest or whatever, you can do that in each match. But typically, you know, most of us sit down and we play an hour or two, if hopefully, if we're lucky, we'll play it on the same server. And sure, there's some turnover, but you know, usually names sort of stick around, especially if you start to re you know revisit the same server on a night to night, week to week basis. You start to recognize some of the names. And, and one trick I use too is if you don't recognize the names, you can start to recognize some of the clan tags. And and basically, you can kind of you know, note away in your brain that hey, that clan's not bad. They kind of got their act together. They should be respected. There's other clans like yeah, you know, whatever. The you know the elite clan is, is kind of garbage. And when I see them, I, I want to victimize them. Uh, but these are ways you file these things away, and like I said, when I when I would play poker, I would sit down. And my, my, my first assessment would be, is this table strong, is this table weak? A lot of times you can make that assessment before you even sit down, if, if you were smart about it. Um, if it was a strong table, I would want to get up and leave. You know, the, the poker's about making money. It's not about winning, it's not about getting better in that moment. It's not about having fun, it's about winning. It's about making some money. So if you ran across a strong table where you felt you were probably on the lower half, or there was a couple guys that were just a lot better than you, you'd leave. Now that doesn't apply to, to first wish shooters, and I wouldn't advocate that at all. But I would advocate is if, if the table's weak, if the server's weak, settle in for a long session because if the table's weak uh, you, you got a good chance you, you have a leverage there you're sitting down with an advantage and you want to make sure you can kind of really push that advantage no matter how small it might be any advantage of any size you want to take advantage of that you want to leverage it you want to capitalize on it and by doing that especially in poker if the table is weak and you felt you, you had a skill advantage you were the better player at the table you wanted to play many small hands and I'm going to get into that how that equates to first person shooters to, in a little bit you don't want to get all in. You want to play a lot of small hands. You don't want to get all in pre-flop because it's one decision, and anybody can get lucky, and you, you can lose very easily. Especially, you know, as a lot of you know they, they glamorize this on TV, obviously. But the smart players, if they felt like they had an advantage, you want to play a lot of small hands. You want to make the other guys make a lot of decisions because every decision, you're more suited to make the right decision than he is, and you have the advantage on every decision. So you want to make as many decisions as possible. That's just the basic fundamental principle of poker, and I find that that translates over into first person shooter, the battlefield. Uh, for myself as well. So first of all, assessing your enemy, you know, you need to you need to gauge them. And in a lot of ways, you do. That. Obviously, you can do the scoreboard. But we know scoreboard KD. It's kind of very misleading. So what I do is I like to base my assessment of my enemy on how my engagements go with him. And you know, if I if a guy clearly outplays you, you want to take note. I mean, you just don't want to take note of his name or like I said, his clan tag. Take note of what kid he's running. If he's a recon running around with a carbine like an ACWR, well, next time you see a recon running into the building. You might not want to pursue so you know aggressively thinking, oh, I got this guy, I got the advantage, because he could turn around with a carbine, the ACWR, and mow you down just easily. These are things you sh should file away. It's hard to consciously think about them, but they need to be in your subconscious. And as you do this, and as you really think about it, and as you get better in your map awareness and game awareness, these things just kind of happen. And that's what really kind of starts to separate the really good players from kind of the average players. 
Now, a lot of times as you assess the other team, if you feel like they're better than you, the table's strong, the server's strong, this should kind of dictate how you play. It, it should dictate how conservative, how aggressive, how many risks you take. I mean, if you feel like you're the better player in the server, you know, at least, you know, there's only one or two guys in the team you're really kind of fearful in a 1v1, you can play a little more risky. You can play a little more aggressive. Now, don't play stupid, don't play reckless, but you can take more risks, you can be more aggressive. And you want to rely on your superior skill to kind of get you out of those 50-50s or maybe 1v2s that kind of surprise you. If the opposite is true, you feel like this is a really pretty stacked server. Maybe you're playing, you know, you're following on a YouTuber or you notice a couple competitive clan tags in there or something. You need to slow it down. You need to play a little more conservative. You need to play a little smarter. Let the game kind of come to you a little more. Don't kind of try to dictate. You, you don't want to dictate the play against better players. That's just going to end in disaster. You don't want to let them push you around either. And that's kind of the trick. And that's where you got to really find. And that's where map awareness and things and, and game mode awareness are really going to help you out. Now, I, I mentioned how you want to play for smaller hands if you feel like you have the skill advantage at the table. And basically what that means to me in Battlefield 4 is you want to avoid getting all in. You don't want to just rush the MCOM. You know, because any time, anything could get you, you know, you just run in, blinders on, you could get shot in the back, you can get C4'd, you can have a nade kill, cruise missile, there's any number of lucky or dislucky ways for you to die. And what you're doing is you're putting your life in someone else's hands, in essence. What you want to do is get into many, many small engagements, and you want to try to dictate as many 1v1s as you can. You're the better player. You're, you're assessing that you're the better player. You want to get in many 1v1s, because any 1v1 you get in, you feel you have an advantage. What does that mean? It means playing a little slower, playing a little kind of uh, cover to cover, trying to kind of pick people 1v1, I mean, maybe 1v2, but your skills should be able to get you out of that. But you don't want to look for those. You don't want to, you know, force those. Every 1v1 you can put yourself into, you should feel like you have an advantage. So obviously that's what you're trying to get into. And you want to clear the area first and then walk up and just army M commonly after you kill all the enemies. It's, it's really pretty simple in that sense. If you do a good job of kind of identifying not only your enemy's player, you know, skill, but also the style of play they're going to do. So now you've now you've analyzed the other team. You say, all right, there's a couple, you know, good players over there. Maybe they're all, you know, s you know, hanging the same clan tag, right? So they're obviously kind of squatted up. So now that should kind of, you know, multiply your kind of respect for them a little bit. They're not only a good player, but there's several good players probably working together. So you need to be wary of them. You need to show them respect. And what that should do is that should dictate not only just like how, where you rank as far as like are there better players here or not, but it should also affect how you play. And, and I mentioned that a little bit, but it should affect your style. It should affect your ca your tactics. Tactics. Try to identify how they're playing. Are they being super aggressive? Are they trying to flank? Are they trying to run up right the middle? Are they, you know, trying to parachute out of a helicopter? Are they playing defensively? Are they sniping? Or, you know, and that should then dictate to you how you should best counter their playstyle. They're the main threat on the other team. They're probably going to be the guys, if they don't get the MCOM arms or you know, cap the, uh, ca capture points, they're probably going to be the reason those things occur. So it's your job to counter them and try to counter, you know, counterbalance the game with them. So if, watch what they're doing. If they're flanking and they're pushing really hard, Maybe you want to set a trap along that left side or something, you know, and, and, and keep these things in mind. Once you've identified the core, the backbone of the other team, and the main threat, it's up to you to then decide how are you going to best counter that threat. Just to try to help explain that to you, let me give you kind of a real life example. Something that happens to me all the time, something that I kind of use. Let's just go on Operation Locker. It's really easy you want to do. You're running outside the snow, you're trying to get your flank on, try to break this little siege, and you get into a 1v1 with one guy and you lose to him or he just flat out outplays you and you're in the kill cam you're like okay that guy you know he, he just outplayed me he pulled off a sweet sweet move I, you know he looks like he could be a competitive guy to me and then you see two or three guys spawn in on him all carrying the same clan tag okay so now i got one guy who i'm going to show respect to two or three guys in his squad with the same clan tag just spawned in on him now i'm going to assess that he's you know equal to me or greater he has friends he's working with again that, that's going to kind of bump him up again on your on your chart here so now what you need to do is as you're in the kill streak uh, kill screen trying to log in and say all right listen if i'm trying to be aggressive if, I, if my team is winning and i'm trying to close this match out i'm going to avoid snow if they're out there they're going to hold snow my job is to avoid that and i'm going to flank the other way i'm going to go as far away from those guys as i can take advantage of their best players are out on snow i'm going to push the advantage somewhere else now if the if the opposite is true if it's kind of a stalemate or your team is losing and you don't feel like your team has anybody to match them and they're being aggressive so now you got that guy that's equal or greater to you with his squad mates with his clan mates out on snow if they start to push then it's up to you to get out there to try to try to like stem that advance and help balance it out for your team so that's what i mean by once you identify a threat and once you kind of assess your enemy it's up to you to then figure out how to counter them 
given to any given situation. Are you winning? Is it kind of, you know, dead even? Are you losing? Are you getting them steamrolled? Are you steamrolling? There's so many different variables, and this would be a really long video if I got into them all, but I just kind of wanted to talk about some of these parallels I've, I've picked up in, in the years with, you know, kind of poker and other kind of aggressive games and, and first-person shooters and some things I, I use to kind of make my decisions. Um, again, it's really hard to be conscious about this. You have to be at first, and it's going to be kind of clumsy as you're literally thinking about all these things. But the more you do and the more you get used to these fundamentals, they're going to come second nature to you. They're going to be subconsciously calculated almost, and you're going to find that your map and game awareness and your just overall play is going to improve. So let me know what you guys think. Post like always in the comments. I love getting into the dialogue with you guys. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like. It really helps me out. You guys have been kicking butt with that, and I've really seen some good uh, returns on that. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to you soon, guys. Take care.